So far in our discussions of kinetics, we've looked at overall reactions. Now what we want to do is we want to look at, well, what are the individual steps or collisions or reactions that are built up to give us our overall reaction? And that is where this idea of reaction mechanisms come in. So they come into mechanistically, what are the individual steps that give me my overall reaction? These elementary steps, which I have here, I have three individual mechanistic steps. They are called elementary. Now what an elementary step means is that they represent actual collisions. So this is telling me that I have a molecule of NO colliding with another molecule of NO, or N2O2 colliding with a molecule of H2, or N2O colliding with another molecule of H2. So these are individual collisions. So we have each of these individual collisions that are um, built up to give us our overall reaction. Okay. So we want to look at what information does this give us? What does this tell us about this reaction? Well, if we have these individual elementary steps, we can write out our rate law expressions. So we can say rate one, so I'm just going to call that for rate step one, is equal to K1 for our original step times the concentration of NO. Now, so far, what we've said is you have a reaction, you can't actually determine what the exponent or order of that uh, specific reactant is unless you have experimental data. Well, if we have individual elementary steps, we can actually extract what the order is. And the order is equal to the coefficient here. Now, the only reason why that is true is because we're looking at, for this reaction to happen, I'm going to have a molecule of NO collide with another molecule of NO. And so if we double the concentration, we are not only doubling the possibility of this molecule being there, but also doubling the possibility of this molecule here. So we have four times the number of possible collisions that we could have, which is going to increase our rate fourfold. And so we see now with an elementary step, this is only for an elementary step, we can say that our rate in our rate law expression, that our order is equal to the coefficient. Okay, so we see here the coefficient of NO is, is two. Therefore, the rate order of NO in our rate law expression would be, would be two. We could do the same thing here. Rate two equals K2 times the concentration of N2O2 times the concentration of H2. Okay, and so we have, that's our second rate law expression. In our third rate law expression, we would have rate three equals K3 times the concentration of N2O times the concentration of H2. Now I put both of these first order because the coefficient in front of each of those is one. Now we have these individual rates. Okay, and so then we can go ahead and we can look at our overall reaction. Well, to do this, we would do this just like we have with Hess's law, where we'd say, let's look at the individual steps and let's get rid of what we call intermediates. So something that is produced and then consumed. So we see in our first reaction, we produce N2O2. The next reaction, it's consumed. So the net change is that we are not producing it nor consuming it overall, uh, but we're consuming everything that we produce. So there's no net increase or decrease in the amount of N2O2. And then we see in our second reaction, we produce N2O, and that gives us uh, the next step. It's consumed and reacted with more H2. So we see now our overall reaction includes NO, one mole here, one mole here of H2, and then H2O, H2O, and N2. So we see our overall reaction would be 2NO, 2H2 gives us N2 and two moles of water. Okay, so again, we're just looking at what are the intermediates, those that are produced then consumed, right? This would be an intermediate. And this is our overall reaction. Now, why is it important for us to look at these elementary steps if we're looking at the kinetics, right? Great, this tells us stuff about what things collide, what molecules collide to give us our products. But what's real important here is that these steps aren't necessarily all the same speed. So one step could be much faster than the other steps. Let's say, for example, in this specific reaction mechanism, this step is slow, and we're talking relative speeds, okay? The, this step is fast, and this step is fast, okay? Well, since we have a slow step and two fast steps, that would mean that this is the one that's gonna limit or uh, minimize our rate because it's kind of the barrier for us to get going. 
Once our N2O2 is formed, since this is, these two are fast steps, we're going to have this reaction and this reaction happen relatively quickly compared to our first reaction. So our slow step we would define as our rate limiting step. And it's limiting how fast or throttling how fast our reaction happened because it is the one where we are waiting upon it to happen for the rest of them to occur. Now because it is our rate limiting step, what we'll see is that this rate is going to be much slower than this rate or this rate. So if we're looking at our overall rate, these rates don't matter because they are much, much, much faster than our first rate. So by looking at our mechanism, what we'll see is that the rate law expression for our slow step is going to be our overall rate law expression. And so we'd see the rate law expression for this reaction is equal to the rate law expression for our first step. K1, NO squared. And this is a consequence of the fact that in our reaction, these two are very fast. They're not going to really affect our rate. And so we'll see this rate here is for our slow step or our rate limiting step, rate determining step. Okay? And so these are the important things that we can extract from reaction mechanisms. It tells us what things are colliding, what molecules are colliding. In addition to that, by looking at the rate law expressions, which we can predict the order now because there are specific collisions that are happening in our elementary steps, the slow step is going to be the one that gives us the ability to identify what our overall rate law expression is. And this is really useful and helpful because it lets us be able to predict this without actually having to collect a bunch of experimental data and then look at how the, the rates change as our reaction concentrations change. So hopefully this gives us a good idea of how we use elementary steps in a reaction mechanism, what a reaction mechanism is, and how that relates to our overall reaction and our overall rate.